Paul Farbrace, I don't quite know where to start, really, but w- with some sort of question like, what a fantastic game of cricket. Yeah, I mean, I've said for quite a long time now, county cricket's a pretty dull, boring game, isn't it? Um, but I, I, I'm not quite sure what to think at the moment. I, I think I've been through, like probably everyone in the ground, been through every range of emotion you could possibly go through. I'm looking at Alfonso Thomas doing his interview 10 yards from us, and, I, you know, you just think about what, what goes through your head at that time. I mean, they're, they're dead and buried this morning. The game's over. We need five wickets. They need, what, I don't know, 200, 300 runs. Um and for Louis Kimber to play the way that he did was exceptional. And when we shook hands at the end, I think every single one of us said to him, you didn't deserve to be on the losing side playing like that. I mean, it was remarkable ball striking. You know, we, we between the hours of 12 and 1, we completely lost our heads and had some pretty ordinary plans and executed them even worse. Um, and it was quite frustrating. But the, the great thing is, at lunchtime, you know, we said that they still, at that point, needed, what, 89 runs yeah. to win. Um, we won from a... You know, a, a worse situation against them last year, and I did say to the lads that you know if we got one wicket, you, you you go from in a situation like that you go where you're not expecting to win. All of a sudden the pressure turns, and you're expecting to win as a batting side. But fair play to uh, Louis Kimber. I mean, he just kept playing, he just kept striking, and you know it, it looked as though he was he was going to win the game. And it, it was one of those things. I think with about ten minutes before we took our final wicket, I sort of almost thought, well. If we do lose this, we could be angry about our plans. We could be angry about the way we bowled. But actually, sometimes in the game of cricket, you just have to say well played to someone who, who has an absolute day out and played brilliantly. I was thinking that as well. I mean, the statistics, he's it's the most sixes ever in a county championship game, overtaken Ben Stokes, who got 17. How did he hit? 21. 21, did he? Um, like about 41, it? didn't it? It's the, and it's the fastest double century in the history of the county championship. I'm not surprised. So we were, you know, we, we were watching history being made, Paul. I'm not, look, it, it, as I say, it, it was an exceptional innings and he, he really, you know, he, he didn't deserve to be on the losing side. But, you know, I, it, it, it's, that, that's the game and that's what brings us all back, isn't it? You know, the amount of people when I turned up this morning and saying to me, oh, you know, could be all over by lunch and I kept saying no, you just never know this game and you never know you never know the, the one thing from our point of view and you know I, I think we, we genuinely believe that we could win the game all the way through even at lunchtime we still genuinely believe we could win it we knew that we had enough skill with our bowlers and and as I say once you got one wicket you felt like the game would come our way um, but that, you know, it, it's just been a fantastic advert for the game of cricket. It's been four brilliant days of cricket, fantastic sunshine, yet another magnificent pitch at Hove that had everything. You know, it had bounce, carry, it turned on days three and four, um, and yet it, everybody showed that if they bat well on it, you can score runs on it. So, you know, magnificent game of cricket. Um, it's another win. It's four wins out of eight. It seems a long time ago now, Paul, but the beginning of this game lets you win the toss. They put you in as Yorkshire did. You were in trouble in that game, in trouble in this game, 35 for three. That sounds a long time ago now, Paul. It does, yeah. I mean, it, it does. It seems like about two weeks ago. But, you know, <laughs> again, the great thing about this side is that, um, you know, Oli Carter, who, who won't mind me saying, he's, he's been really battling over the last few weeks. He started the season brilliantly. He came back from Australia and looked in fantastic touch. He played in the first game of the season because Chet Swal was injured um, and he looked in great touch. And then, unfortunately for him, he sort of went through that spell of being out of the squad, out of the team, then in T20 cricket, um, he, he was in and out of the side there. And, and it doesn't take long to lose form and lose a bit of confidence. And last week he played in the second team go, game down at the at Hampshire at the bowl. And he, he, you know, he didn't get any runs. And we sat down at the end of that game and had a long talk about his game, his technique. But the one thing that he's got is a massive heart and he's got real desire. And to go and bat the way that he did at the start of that innings when the ball was nipping around against a very good Leicester team attack um, showed his quality and it showed his passion and desire to, to get stuck in for the team and that innings was a really important innings for us it then allowed John Simpson to come in he played brilliantly you know another big hundred and what 180 and, and you know obviously um, Nathan got runs and we got ourselves in a good position bowling wise Sean Hunt had a really tough start to his bowling you know a few no balls didn't quite get the right length and then he finished off by finishing with four for 70 knocks the tail over and 11 balls and the game comes very quickly back our way so you know the game has ebbed and flowed but we, we have got we've got players in our team who can change games we've got players in our team now who genuinely believe we can win games and, and in a strange sort of way we'd have all loved to have won the game by lunchtime and you know been on the beach this afternoon with an ice cream but you know and we gain more confidence in winning games like that because we know that we can hang in there and even when the game's going away from us we've still got the desire and the fight and the skill 
Chelsea was going over the line in a game like that. Uh, can we talk about Nathan and Because yeah. he's almost sort of sneaked in unnoticed, really. Yeah. Jaden Seals goes, Nathan comes in. He, he almost sort of won you the game down at the Aegeus Bowl yeah. the other night in the T20. Yeah. He comes here, he gets a half century, he gets the last two wickets. Yeah. I mean, he, he looks to me like a very low maintenance cricketer, Paul. Uh, he, he's fantastic. I, I had him at Warwickshire, signed him at Warwickshire um, three years ago. And that's why, you know, last year the opportunity to bring him down here. I knew, he, fantastic professional, um, trains really hard. He, he was always going to keep improving and getting better because he worked so hard at his game. And he's very astute mentally. Um, and, you know, he, he found the first year at Warwickshire quite tough. And then, I mean, this winter, he was the leading seam bowler in Sheffield Shield cricket. And so it shows how much he's improved. He's been picked for Australia A. He's definitely on their radar. And, you know, you're right, at the Rose Bowl the other night, it's a fantastic striking of a ball that got us to a score that then made it slightly easier to defend. But look, he's done very well for us. Um, and he's got one more championship game at Northampton at the weekend. He goes through to the end of the T20 period and he goes back to Australia. But he, he's been fantastic. He is low maintenance. But he's a very popular character in our team. But more importantly, he's an absolutely top-class professional. And that's why we bought him, because he is helping our young players to learn good habits and learn how to perform under pressure. And, you know, he's shown it now in the T20 game and in the tight championship game that, you know, he's the boat that we need in our team. Um, it was a great win. You mentioned there, Paul, you said that Sussex lost their way before lunch. Was, was that a concern, how that happened at all? Well, it wasn't a concern, because the, the, the plan... You know, and I, I spoke to a couple of fields on the boundary. The, the plan was to to go short ball and try and bounce Louis out. And, you know, we, we had a couple, Ollie Robinson got him on the gloves and a couple just fell short. And then we had him nicked off and it went between keeper and slip. And you sort of think, you know, you know he's going to swing and he might get 70 or 80 here. But, you know, he just kept going. But our hour between 12 and 1, we... we we weren't thinking clearly. We made some mistakes, but that, that happens. You know, you, you don't go through a whole season without having a session like that. And sometimes you have a day like that. But, you know, it's a bit like life, isn't it? You, some days you try everything you do and everything goes wrong. Other times, you know, everything goes right for you. But we had that hour. But the good thing is it was only an hour. And, and lunch came at the right time for us. He gave his chance to regroup. And then, you know, the, the session after lunch was absolutely top class. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know... The, Players make mistakes. You know, we all make mistakes. I make mistakes every day. And, and you know, you, you, you're you not going to be human if you go through a whole day without making a mistake or a four-day game without making a mistake. And people don't mean to bowl short, wide balls. People don't mean to bowl no balls or drop catches. But that's the way it goes sometimes. And, and you know, if it was predictable, we wouldn't keep turning up to watch the game, would we? Uh, we certainly wouldn't. Uh, game's coming thick and fast. Northampton, what's the what's the score on the injury front, particularly with, with Daniel Hughes, Paul? Um, Hughesy has progressed well this week. Uh, he'll practice on Friday and then again on Saturday. So hopefully he's going to be fully fit for Sunday. Um, and then, you know, obviously he's got to get in the team then, hasn't he? Because, you know, Oli Carter's played really well. But, you know, it might be that we readjust. We played with five seamers in this game. It might be we readjust the, the bowl in and bring an extra batter in. But let, let's see when we get to Northampton. We look at the pitch, you know, and we've all got, you know, hopefully at least one day off where we can uh, clear our heads and then come back fresh. Well done, Paul. Thank you. Cheers.